So right now, right where you are, right where you are, I want you to find a circle of people. A circle of people, Coach Chris, that you trust. Amen. Whether they're in front of you, whether they're behind you. And all over this place, all over this sanctuary, Valeria, we're going to turn wherever you're sitting, we're going to turn it into an altar. I dare you to look at the folk that you're connected to and just say, this is my altar for the day. Hallelujah. His heads are bowed all over this sanctuary. His eyes are closed. Here's what's amazing. What's amazing is we're allowing the wrong stuff to be important to us when we come to worship. The only thing that really should matter is that you hear from him. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we got altars built all over this auditorium. And right now, Lady Mosley, wherever you are, I want you to begin to start praying like you're the only one. Like you're the only one in here today. Come on, I want you to start praying for the folk you're connected to. Whether you know their situation or not, whether you know their dilemma or not. If you don't know what to pray for, Luke, you ought to be praying for the state of our country. In the name of Jesus, the Bible declares, Ask and it shall be given. The Bible declares, knock and the door shall be opened. The Bible declares, seek and ye will surely find. Come on, right now, right where you are, we come against the spirit of distraction. And now, God, I squeeze power into my neighbor's hand. I squeeze encouragement into my neighbor's spirit. God, I squeeze the spirit of thanksgiving into the life of the hand I hold. Come on, I can't hear you. I need you to be praying. Pray until you feel God move. Pray until you feel heaven shift. And if you don't know what to pray for, pray that God would continue to bless your church. That God would continue to send believers to your church. That God would increase your faith. That God would increase your anointing. That God would show you your purpose. Come on, in the name of Jesus, shift God. Every circle that's praying. God, I come against jealousy right now. And God, I thank you for waking me up this morning. I thank you for my family having a reasonable portion of health and strength. God, I thank you for a job to go to. A roof over my head. God, I thank you. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Now, when you feel God shifting your atmosphere, when you feel God shifting your space, I want you to begin to praise God for the folk in your circle. I want you to begin to bless God for the folk in your circle. I want you to begin to celebrate what God's getting ready to do for the people in your circle. If you were praying for your family, you want to thank God that y'all made it through 2016. And that God's getting ready to prepare you for some great stuff in 2017. Come on, in the name of Jesus. Now, when you feel God move you, you can let your neighbor's hand go and begin to praise him. Begin to thank him. Come on, everybody, open up your mouth and declare it. Hallelujah. Oh, come on, let's sit. Let him hear you today. Let him hear you. Oh, come on, let him hear you. Oh, come on, let him hear you. Come on, celebrate with your neighbor. How many of you know he's worthy? Come on, how many of you know he's worthy? Anybody know he's worthy today? 
chapter 1, when you found it, when you shout, we got it. If you're still looking for it, say, wait a minute. Amen. And while you're still locating it, just elbow your neighbor and say, you do know he's worthy. And Zach, here the crazy thing is, he's worthy even when we ain't worthy. So, 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 so just... Just look at somebody near you and say, I ain't worthy, but he's worthy. And that's why I praise him the way I do. Okay, Matthew, Matthew, chapter 1, verse 18 declares from the NIV translation. Our minister Highsmith text says, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. Um, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. And because Joseph, Jojo, her husband, was faithful to the law, and yet did not, Pastor Don, want to expose her to public disgrace. He had Mincy in mind, base man, to divorce her quietly. Mm, but Dr. Tan, but after he had considered this, consider this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Valeria, Joseph, uh, son of David, do not be afraid. Uh, because Deja, take Mary home as your wife. Yes, because, Minister Moss, what is conceived in her janelle is from the Holy Spirit. Uh, Mama, verse 21, the text says, she will give birth, Coach Pat, to a son. And Dominique, you are to call him Jesus. Yeah. Because he will save Evangelist Shanique, his people, from their sins. All this, all this took place, Pete, to fulfill, base man, what the Lord had said through the prophet. Prophet, the virgin will conceive, Monique, and give birth to a son. And Yolanda, they will call him Horace Emmanuel, which means, sweet Luke, God is with us. And when Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord Oliver had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. Uh, but fellas, I need y'all to pay real good attention to verse 25. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son. And he gave him the name Jesus. Come on, sir. Ms. Ann, for the next few moments that are mine, I want to hang my hat homiletically, Miller Time, and tag this text from this thought. Don't let it drive you crazy. Come on, sir. I, 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 need you to, I need you to just find at least two people, uh, Tony Craig, on your row and just point at them and tell them, don't let it drive you crazy. Don't let it drive you, crazy. you may rest in your seats in the presence of the Lord. Uh, Deacon T.P., uh, as I began this series on just do the right thing last week, God led me, Valeria, to this text. And what strange, Rodell, is God said there would be some worshipers who would show up, Jocelyn, today That's right. with Paul some stuff in your life that's seemingly driving you slam 
crazy. <laughs> Vanessa, I believe this room is full of individuals who grew up with a picture, a plan, and a portrayal about Evangelist Desiree, how you wanted your life to end up. Lorraine, however, what happens when your plans, your dreams, Macy, your ideas are altered, adjusted, and shifted? I know I'm not the only one in here, Zach, that operates on a schedule and a routine. That as long as things go according to plan, schedule, and timeline, I'm fine. But let something happen that was not a part of my original plan and it drives me crazy. Have, have you ever been in a situation where you were looking forward to showing up somewhere on time and the person who was riding with you had the unmitigated audacity to show up late to your spot? Uh, Miller, I wonder if there anybody other than your pastor that operates on a schedule, a time Line. You got stuff in your house set up exactly the way you like it set up. And doesn't it bother you when other folk come into your space and move your stuff and then have the audacity to look at you like Moss while you getting so upset? It's just a cup. I need at least three of y'all to slip up one hand. If when you come to worship, it drives you crazy, Brittany, to see other folk who don't show up for the same reason you do. High five your neighbor and just say don't let it drive you crazy. If they didn't show up to praise him if they didn't show up for the right reason. If they didn't show up with a smile on their face if you've been trying to speak to them all service and they've been looking in the other direction I just need 12 of y'all to holler don't let it drive you crazy. Y'all hear this? In our text, we are introduced to a man named Joseph. And it was evident that when the time came for the Virgin Mary to become the mother of God's son, she would need a protector, a husband to shield her from the process and pain of the law. Because you do understand that religious folk can get funny sometimes. Now, now I ain't talking to nobody that's in here today, but how many of y'all know some very funny religious folk? And now, they want to tell you what you can't do. Uh, while they get an opportunity to rely on God's grace for the stuff they do. But I wish I had about three of y'all in here that read that scripture that says we all sin and come short, KT, of God's glory. Do I have any company in here that'll slip up one hand and declare that's the reason I act the way I act when I come to worship? Because I recognize, prophet, that I ain't nothing but a sinner saved by God's Y'all hear this? So God knew that Mary would need a husband to protect her from what people would say regarding the law. And also the infant would need somebody to fill the role of a father figure in his early years. And Darius, the man God chose, for the assignment was Joseph, whose family, get this Dominique, had fallen on difficult times. Jocelyn, I think I'll pause there parenthetically, put a quarter in my meat and cut my hazard lights on and let somebody know this, that Aubrey, God can still choose and use you even when you're going through difficult times. 
And I know uh, that that's not a real popular word in the church, Lady Mosley, because uh, Rodell, we want everybody in church to already have it together. But I wish I had at least three of y'all that would slip up one hand and declare that ain't my testimony. But I thank God that God doesn't choose us or use us based upon what season we're in. And Joseph is a reminder to all of us that even though you're going through difficulty, God can still use you. I wish I had somebody that would thank God that in the middle, Macy, of some of your most difficult moments, God still saw fit to call you to use you. I told the preachers this morning, prior to worship, we've got to get back to the place where we just thank God that he allows us to say something on his behalf. I wouldn't have anything to say if it wasn't for God saying it for me. Somebody ought to shout today, Deja, because he still blesses you, Courtney, in spite of you. Here it is, Joseph, a hard-working carpenter from a small town was the most unlikely choice. I would have thought that the Son of God would be raised in a palace with the trappings and accoutrements of power and groomed to be king. Instead, God needed a man to be a father in the home where Mary would raise her son. That's right. Of all the millions of men who probably qualified and were justified to be the earthly father of Jesus, God chose the most unlikely candidate. My question today is how many of us didn't ask for the position didn't qualify for the position, didn't brown nose to get the position. I tell you to just look at your neighbor and say, I ain't asked for none of this. No, that's the wrong neighbor. But tell the neighbor on the other side, but I'm blessed by all of it. How many of you know that you were not the right choice, you were not the best choice, but aren't you glad even though other folk didn't think you were the right choice, God saw you as the best choice. Here it is, y'all. What did God see in Joseph that was so incredibly remarkable that he chose him to be the father of Jesus? And brothers, here it is. My question to you today is how do you measure up? to the standard called Joseph. Good, Let me park here parenthetically and lift this. Anybody can look good in the dark. Come on, sir. Come on, sir. Did you hear what I said? Anybody High Smith can look good anybody. in the dark. All right. And anybody Brittany can sound big when they're standing next to Lord. Ladies, what does your poor bay look like when you place them next to the standard called Joseph? That's why I strive every day to be more like Joseph. Because I got it, I can see about three of y'all looking at me like, Pastor, I ain't trying to be like Joseph, I'm trying to be like Jesus. Well, if you first figure out how to be like Joseph, Joseph will lead you to how to become like my God. Y'all missed it. Here it is. What can I learn from Joseph and Mary? First thing that Joseph and Mary teach us, they teach us don't let other folk drive you crazy. Come on, sir. Got a couple things I'm going to show you and then I'm out of your way. Here it is. What can we learn from Mary and Joseph? I'm glad you asked. Number one, see his dilemma. Everybody say dilemma. dilemma. Now, Pastor, exegetically help me see the dilemma in the next 16 minutes. Watch this. His dilemma was threefold. Wiggins, he could not believe that this good girl had suddenly gone back. Come on, sir. Come on, 
And I wonder, I'm going to pause there parenthetically and pick me a ride up along the way. I wonder, did the person you first met Come on, sir. show you a side of them upon further investigation? It's interesting, y'all, because Joseph in his mind was like, I know that Mary is a virgin. I know that Mary has lived a pure lifestyle. So God, where in the world did she come up? And here's what's deep, men. A whole lot of us raise that very same question. You thought she was a good girl. Or ladies, you thought he was a good man. But what happens when the good man or the good woman turns back? Uh, but here's the second thing about his dilemma that amazed me. He could not believe the story. Good, sir. Now, I know the child are more sane and sanctimonious than most of us in here. But picture this. How do you go to Valeria's shop and tell the ladies in the shop? that you've been pregnant. Okay, I missed y'all. Uh, fellas, fellas, how do you show up, sweet Lou, to the barber shop? And they know that you're engaged to Mary and Paul, all of a sudden now, you've got to try to explain to the brethren that your fiance is pregnant by the Holy. So here it is, y'all. The first dilemma he was encountered with is he had met a good girl, but the good girl now sounds like she's getting ready to have a bad reputation. But not only that, the good girl told him an unbelievable story. What would you do, A.G., if James came home and told you that you were pregnant by the Holy? But here is his third dilemma. He had to do something to save his name and his life. So watch this. This is before the paternity test. Because I can see about seven of y'all looking at me saying, if it was me, I would have just got up. Uh, this was before the Morris show, so he could not have Mary show up on the show to see if he was exactly the father. So which leads me to my second point. You saw his dilemma. Now I need you to, to see his decision. Come on, sir. In verse 19, the text says, because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to nature of the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. Even though he felt like he had been done wrong, he still wanted to do right. I wonder when people have done you wrong, can you still treat them right? I wonder after they've called you everything but a child of God, after they've thrown you under the bus with no bus assistance, can you still treat them just because of what somebody else said or did to you is not an excuse for you not to do the right thing. I need you to high five your neighbor. Shama starts and just say you got to do the right thing. And the right thing is love your neighbor even when they've mistreated you. The right thing is to pray for folk who have wrongly accused you. The right thing is to forgive them no matter how bad. See, that's why it's a little quiet right through here. Because y'all are like me. You struggle when people break your heart. You struggle when people let you down. You struggle when people don't meet up to your expectations. But I just need a hundred of y'all, the rest of y'all are watching, uh, to lift up one hand and say, but I gotta do the right thing. And the right thing is not to walk on the other side of the church and not speak to you. The right thing is not to pray that something would happen to you. The right thing is not to bad mouth you, but the right thing is to love you till you get it right. I grab the neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, cause that's what God did to me. He loved me even when I was wrong. He loved me even when I messed up and if God can love me in the middle of mine surely I can love him yes. it is now let me press 
Let me press. I got 12 minutes and I'm done. Here it is. Consider this. Private business does not need a public audience. I know, I know. I just lost about 29 Facebook friends. Y'all can go ahead and delete me now. Uh, but private business that need a public audience, grab your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, if you gonna fuss them out, fuss them out in private. Because what, oh my God, I just lost about 29 of y'all. Let me say it again. Private business don't need a public audience. If I love you in private, it'll show in public. If I'm your friend in private, it'll show in public. Private business don't need a... And let me go ahead and drop this out here real quick. Because I know that I passed a group of people that love for people to be publicly crucified when they fall short. But grab your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, be careful how you nail them to the cross. Because all of us will one day have to bear a cross. And the songwriter said, must Jesus bear the cross alone? And all the world come free. No, there's a cross for everybody. And there's a cross for me. Shake your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, be careful how you handle me. Because the wheel, if it keeps on turning, you going to get your turn. It is, it is. I only got 10 minutes, y'all. It is. Let me say it one more time. Private business does not need a public audience. A two things that we all need to consider whenever we're about to make big decisions. Somebody say big decisions. Number one, big decisions are not made quickly, but prayerfully. I hear it. Show it to me in the text. His first thought was to divorce her. But then in verse 20, text says, but after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream. Now, let me suggest this, that could it be your first thought ain't the right thought? Because your first thought is your thought and not his. Okay, I miss y'all. I look at your neighbor real quick, watch this, and just say, neighbor, if I would have did what I thought at first, I might not be sitting in the worship. Oh, oh don't, don't look at me like that. Because it's about fivefold that if I would have did what I thought at first, y'all would have been coming to visit me probably in 811. But thanks be to God, God gave me another thought. I dare you to tell you anything. Say nothing to your neighbor. Just slip up one hand and say, God, thank you for a second thought. My first thought was to walk away. My first thought was to say, forget it. But thanks be to God, I didn't move too quickly. Now, here it is. I got to press. God, I'm not time to get away. Maybe God, Coach Chris, maybe God had to put Joseph to sleep for him or to get to work. Is that good? Okay, let me keep working then. You so busy trying to stay woke and work. And God is saying, while you working and woken, you really in my way. Oh, y'all missed that. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, God can do more when you sleep than you can ever do while you're trying to stay away. Come here, Adam. Adam didn't get Eve until God put him because had he not put Adam to sleep, Adam would have probably been trying to tell God what kind of woman he thought he needed. Sometimes God has to put you, my God. It is, it is. Let me see. Let me see. Watch this. I know we're ready to come up on Christmas. Let me press. The story of my Christmas childhood. Now, y'all, as a child, mama, I loved 
Christmas Eve. Because Sweet Lou, and I don't want to mess it up, I think most of the children are gone, uh, but Sweet Lou, I always, Oliver, wanted to see what Santa Claus looked like. <laughs> I've had my list of things because that song that says, have you been naughty or nice? Every year, no matter how naughty I might have been, I always told Santa Claus that I was nice. Can I pop that parenthetically for 30 seconds and tell you that a whole lot of us have been naughty, but we've been claiming we've been nice. Oh, but you better look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you better thank God that I ain't in charge of your black my car. Y'all catch that next week, but y'all hear it is. So, I always wanted to see Santa Claus. So for me, I used to stay up as late and I could never figure out why my parents, James would always say, oh y'all must have the same parents I did. And, and I'm trying to figure out, now if Santa Claus Mincy is coming from the North Pole, then what me being sleep has to do with Santa Claus coming through the chimney that we didn't have? Oh, but let me go ahead and give you the revelation. Here's the revelation. I discovered once I got into God is that I needed to go to sleep so that my parents could pull out the gifts. I ain't trying to mess with nobody Santa Claus today. I would grab your neighbor's hand and say, neighbor, you ain't getting the blessing until you first go to sleep. Because some of us are too busy trying to tell God what you need, when you need it, and how to give it to you. Can I get at least five of y'all to holler tonight? I'm going to bed. It is, it is. Watch this. God ain't going to start working until you start resting. Oh, but let me give you uh, this as I get ready to hasten. Realize just because you didn't plan it doesn't mean God ain't got a purpose for it. I didn't plan it, but God did. Here it is. Three things about change. Expect change Embrace change and enjoy change. See, you too busy being mad about the stuff that happened to you unplanned mm -hmm. that you can't even celebrate that God had a purpose for the unplanned stuff that happened. So you see his dilemma. You see his decision. Now check out his desire. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Verse 21, she will give birth to a son and you're to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Verse 22, all this took place so that the Lord, what he had said through the prophet, Verse 23, the virgin will conceive and give birth, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. Verse 24, Minister Hospital. when Jesus woke up, this is Moses, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him, to marry home as his wife. Consider this, our desires, military, are sometimes delayed, but always delivered. Our desires are delayed, but they're always delivered. Joseph is the man because he was not worried about what other men were going to think or say because he had gotten God's approval. Don't miss this. Some of our craziest blessings our bird out of our craziest situations. And when God calls 
done you to do something crazy. It requires a crazy response. So here's the power for those of us that are gathered. You might be in a crazy season. And the crazy season requires crazy faith. Which produces a crazy seed. In a crazy season, Amen. do what Joseph did. The Bible says, shame, he did what God said. Okay. Watch this. As I close, we see Joseph's dilemma. We see Joseph's decision. We even see Joseph's desire. Because even though Mary was pregnant by the Holy Spirit, he still wanted to marry Mary. I wonder, can you still celebrate even when God doesn't do it Tasha, the way you play. Mm -hmm. So we see his dilemma. We see his decision. Thirdly, we see his desire. But lastly, we see Joseph's duty. All right, sir. What's D is verse 25 says, he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Mm -hmm. He was willing to do the right thing even when he could have done wrong. Reason said, leave Mary. Mm -hmm. Logic said, why go through with the marriage and she is pregnant with a child and an angel? Oh. Or now that she is pregnant, I can go ahead and consummate my marriage. I wonder, Sister Rios, how many of us have made tragic mistakes because we put our desires in front of Jesus' divine plan. I love Joseph. Because he was willing to wait. Thank you, God. Let me say that again. I love Joseph. Because even when a lot of us couldn't wait. I love Joseph. Because now that Mary's pregnant, it would have been meant to real easy for you to go ahead and start doing stuff that God had reserved for the institution of marriage since God did impregnate it. But Joseph was so obedient that he was willing to wait on Jesus. I wonder today how many of us are still willing to wait on Jesus. I know that we live in a fast world with fast food and fast stuff and many of us are able to push a button and get whatever we want. But can you still wait? Wait like Joseph did. Isaiah said it this way. They that wait upon the Lord. He shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings. But now, but now, everybody's in a hurry to go nowhere. If you want to do the right thing, you got to be willing to wait until your change comes. Come on, rest on your feet. I 
Ask our Josephs the level. I saw Joseph's decision. I saw Joseph's desire. But I'm more impressed with his duty. Joseph decided that it was better to wait on Jesus to arrive than for him to forfeit his promise. My sister, my brother, maybe you're here today and you're in the middle of a dilemma, not like Joseph and Mary, but you've got your own dilemma. Yeah. God is saying that this is the day, and this is the time for you to make a decision. Yeah, What's the decision? The decision is now to wait on Jesus. Not only did we see his dilemma, not only did we see his decision, but I thank God for his desire. Because even though he struggled with what was wrong, he still wanted to do the right thing. And if you're here today, my sister, my brother, I invite you to give grace your hand give God your heart and give your life another chance. Maybe maybe you've tried churches before but I want to suggest not because I'm the pastor here but because of the people here that there's no place like grace. And if you're here, my sister, my brother this is your first time or maybe you've been coming for weeks Maybe you've been coming for months. You ought to make a decision today. It's your duty to make a decision. That for God I live and for God I surely die. That's you. You want to make grace your home. Our ministers, they're already in the aisle. Our leaders are in the aisle. I'm just inviting you, my sister, my brother, to step out from where you are. Give one of them your hand. They're going to pray with you. They're going to love on you. But I don't want you to leave the same way you came. Come on right now, wherever you are. Wherever you are. Don't let life drive you crazy. Don't let the stuff of life drive you crazy. Don't let the people in your life drive you crazy. But today, today is the day that I turn it over to Jesus. Come on, if you get, if you're dealing with some crazy stuff, you're dealing with some crazy people. You're dealing with some crazy financial issues. Why don't you turn that situation over to Jesus? If you're here today and Maybe you've been a part of grace, but you strayed away, and now you want to rededicate. You want to recommit yourself to the ministry. You want to recommit yourself back to God. Why don't you love yourself enough, love your church enough, and love those of us around you who are praying. The step I'll give one of our leaders your hand and give your life a brand new stand. Is there one today in the center? Hallelujah. My sister, my brother, is there one? Hallelujah. God, we honor you and we thank you for what you've done in this house today. Come on, grab your neighbor's hand as we get ready to pray and as we get ready to leave. Don't forget, amen, meet us at the rec center uh, right around the corner. Uh, we Farm, I believe it is, right around the corner. Just go to the stoplight, make a left. Uh, our youth football game will take place at 1.30. And immediately following that, we'll have uh, the grand finale of the day, uh, the game at 2.30. We'd love to see you over there. We've got some food over there, uh, some great fun over there. I know it's a little bit cold, amen. But I promise if you come over there and enjoy the fellowship with us, you will be blessed by it. It's always a lot of fun. This is our eighth year doing it. We're so excited about all that God is doing. Grab your neighbor saying, Father, in the name of Jesus, God, as we leave worship today, God, let us look in the mirror and ask ourselves, am I making the right decisions? Am I handling my dilemma in the right way? God, is my desire your desire? And then God, help me to remember that my duty 
is to always do the right thing. God, I thank you and I bless you for the life of the hand I hold. Bless us now as we leave this place. Never your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let your neighbor's hand go. Give God an awesome hand.